Welcome to Zombocom. This is Zombocom. Welcome. This is Zombocom. Welcome to Zombocom. You can do anything at Zombocom. Anything at all. The only limit is yourself. Welcome to Zombocom. Welcome to Zombocar. This is Zombocar. Welcome to Zombocar. This is Zombocar. Welcome. Yes, this is Zombocar. This is Zombocar. And welcome to you who have come to Zombocar. Anything is possible. At Zombocom, you can do anything at Zombocom. The infinite is possible at Zombocom. The unattainable is unknown at Zombocom. Welcome to Zombocom. This is Zombocom. Welcome to Zombocom. Welcome. This is Zombocom. Welcome to Zombocom. Welcome to Welcome to Zombocom. This is Zombocom. Welcome. This is Zamboka. Welcome to Zamboka. Broadcasting from the historic city of Perth Amboy, it's the Late Program with John Luke Shapiro. your announcer, Dr. Alfred Cressy. And now, John Luke Shapiro! Your enthusiasm has really got me going. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the program. My name is John Luke Shapiro. As I said to everyone else that I know, if my jokes do suck, Extradite me out to another country. I don't like it here. Send me to Canada, please. <laughs> um, a Chicago man arrested on drug charges allegedly chewed off the seatbelt in the back of the cop car because he didn't want to miss his son's birthday party. Yeah. <laughs> the man was later caught and arrested, but let that not ruin the real gift he gave his wife and son later that night. Future child support payments. <laughs> now, I don't know if any of you are familiar with this. Um, do you guys any know you guys know about the Rachel Dolezal incident? Hey. Good thing good thing George pressed record this time. <laughs> um, <laughs> so essentially what happened in, 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 uh, with Rachel Dolezal was she was the head of the NAACP in Spokane, Washington. But the thing is, she's white. She posed for ten years posing as a black person, but she's white. Here's the thing. Do people in Spokane, Washington know what a black person looks like? <laughs> you know? I mean, I could go down to Spokane, Washington with my tan skin, me being Puerto Rican, I could pass off as a black person if that's the case. If you look at her, she looks like the interracial love child of a WNBA couple. <laughs> you, know? you know, I would assume people in Spokane, Washington don't know what a black person looks like because I'm going to count that there's like three black people in Spokane, Washington. And you never see them in Spokane because they're probably all working in Seattle. <laughs> to, to be fair, though, uh, I don't think you'd walk around the streets of Spokane, Washington and you'd find a Shaniqua around there. You know? <laughs> Shaniqua from Spokane, Washington just doesn't bode well for some reason. You know, that's like finding a Pablo in South Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> 
you know? <laughs> you know, I'm going to say either the, the blackest thing you could probably think of in Spokane, Washington are the cattle and the roads. <laughs> you got offended by that. That's not my problem. <laughs> um, now on to everyone's favorite fat happy man. Um, Governor Chris Christie went on record recently about running for president, stating that New Jersey citizens want him to stay, according to him. <sighs> well, Governor, I'm afraid to tell you this, but the only real reason we want you to stay as governor is because you are literally impossible to move out. <laughs> you know, <coughs> excuse me, you know when you're moving and you're trying to move your enormously large couch out of your really tiny door and doing so causes a lot more problems? In the end, everyone ends up getting hurt because it's so damn big. Similarities, hello. To the point where you just say, oh, the hell with it, just leave the damn couch there. We'll just buy new furniture. That's how it's going to be with you, Governor Christie. We're going to try and move you out of the office, but we're not going to be able to when a new governor comes in. It's because you're too damn big to fit through the damn doorway. Wait, watch it, please. Come on, just looking at you makes me sweat. No. Oh, I, will, I will tell you that 75% of the world is covered by Chris Christie. The rest... It's also covered by Chris Christie. <laughs> oh my goodness, we have a fantastic program for you here today. Stay tuned, don't change the channel. We have more right after this. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>
Oh, wait, it's gone. Uh, I can't believe why I never thought of this. I wonder why dogs sniff butts. What am I missing out on exactly? Do dogs' butts hold the key to a better life? Why does my dog sniff my butt? Deep questions these are. I would love to see a parody version of Fifty Shades of Grey called Fifty Shades of Richard Simmons. That would be great. It's time to play my dungeon, Anastasia! Yeah! Sweating to the oldies! Oh yeah! Shake those buns, girlfriend! Ugh, I hate these interruptions. I just want to get out of here. This show stinks. John Luke stinks. He thinks he's so cool with his new haircut. He would be able to see it if his head wasn't so far up his rear end. Cocky bastard. What is John Luke doing? Is he talking to himself? Look at how his mouth moves when he talks. How can he form sensible words like that? I want to stuff a sandwich in his mouth so I don't have to watch it. I hate how John Luke makes fun of my persona. Does he not know I'm different? I may be a little off, but it defines the core of who I am. ADHD does have some advantages. Not many. But oh, that looks shiny. Come on, John Luke. Why can't you do anything right? This show is a train wreck. I hope he knows I ditched my girlfriend for this. She thinks I'm at therapy right now. I wonder how many people play the scratch and sniff game with other people's bicycle seats. I would pay to see people do that. Now I understand why pet rocks were popular. Most people are dumber than a box of them. Might be a setup. A pet rock did give a speech at my cousin's wedding and the whole place was rocking. No pun intended. Wait. Yes, pun intended. Um, are we good? We're good, right? Yeah. Oh, wow. All right, we're rolling. Well, <laughs> fantastic. Well, that was an awkward few minutes, I guess. I guess, uh, I guess I'm glad I'm the uh, only one that could actually hear my own thoughts. I'm, I'm just, you know, I was thinking a lot. I'm glad no one can hear my thoughts. You know, imagine if my thoughts or anyone else's thoughts were piped through a PA system. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Moving on. News is always an important thing to know. Being caught up with current events creates awareness and is the main reason for this country's crippling depression. Here now is what you'll see on the next edition of PATV News. Not to be confused with PATV Student News. That's an actual news show. Good evening. My name is Samuel L. Jackson. No, not the actor. Leave me alone. I had it first. <laughs> and here are tonight's top stories. A therapy dog that dresses like a biker and rides a mini motorcycle has been stripped of his therapy license due to his outfit, seen right here. Sources say after the dog's license was revoked, he was seen later that night at a local tavern drinking heavily, barking at the bartender and causing a fight after a stray cat walked in and asked him for change. He was arrested for assault and battery along with public indecency after he was found defecating in an alleyway. The dog has since checked into rehab with six on the line. <laughs> the war between costume characters and tourists in Times Square raged on this week as Minnie Mouse and Hello Kitty were arrested on Thursday for fighting each other in public. <laughs> Sources say the two were fighting over Mickey Mouse as Mickey allegedly had an affair with Hello Kitty while still <laughs> dating Minnie Mouse. <laughs> Mickey Mouse was unable to be reached for comment, but eyewitnesses say he was seen leaving an olive garden near the incident with supermodel Hannah Davis. <laughs> a man is facing charges after he was spotted outside a local elementary school in Massachusetts dressed as a Star Wars stormtrooper, complete with fake gun. The man walked near Brickett Elementary School on Wednesday before he was arrested and was frantically asking everyone beforehand, where are the droids I'm looking for? <laughs> Darth Vader was unable to be reached for comment at this time. A sinkhole on a street just south of Denver swallowed a police SUV on Friday, sending it 10 feet down into the hole and forcing the sergeant inside to climb onto the roof and clamber out of the pit, the local police chief said. Sources say the sinkhole was holding a sign saying, hashtag sinkhole lives matter, and took the opportunity to make a statement. The sinkhole has since been arrested and remains inside a local Denver prison on charges of police harassment and resisting arrest. <laughs> In tonight's Spotlight segment, what does a $2 million ham taste like? 
Our second reporter and part-time bail bondsman, Marcus Todd, Colbert, Rodriguez, Swanson, Samsonite, Mitna, Simpson, Chevrolet, Bugatti, Phelps, Phone, Martinez, <laughs> Santiago, Berkowitz, Job, goes into detail into the journey of what a $2 million ham tastes like. My bet? It probably tastes like ham. <laughs> and now, let's turn to our sports reporter, our new sports reporter, Sergei Nimchina, for what's going on in the sports universe. Thank you, Sam Jackson. Your movies inspire us Russians to make snakes on plane real thing. In hockey news, Lokomotiv defeat Atlant Moscow Blast. Three goal, two, two. I score goal along with my brother Sergei. Dinamo Riga defeat Torpedo. Six goal, two, five. Vladimir Putin came in and scored magnificent hat trick and nation make lot of noise. If people don't make noise, Putin make punishment with bus to Siberia. A <laughs> rise in hockey in Russia came the change and the change in our leadership only means one thing, and one thing only. We, as country, are begin to rise as a powerful nation again. And this time, nobody can stop us. Будет trust и возрождение Советского Союза. Новые хакания. Правительство возьмет на мир. Кремль будет Ваш новый дом Путин будет и сила Советского Союза будет ощущать всему миру. Будет курсе рисе материи России за родину, за родину, за родину. Kalinka, 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 Maya, so do you. That's it for me for sports. Back to you, Sam. Go USA! <laughs> <laughs> the weather is. Oh, who cares? Everything is gone, my cat ate my fish, and then proceeded to kill himself when I told him my problems. Okay? <laughs> then my house burned down again. Again! And not by me. My house put itself on fire after I walked in. <laughs> <laughs> my girlfriend left me. That she said I was too selfish. So what is that supposed to mean? And I didn't and she didn't want to hear my problems either. She's all like Nobody cares about your problems, Felix. You're always so selfish. Why do you always complain? And this person died, that person died. Cut me some slack, okay? Uh, what happened to the weather report? The hell with the weather report, okay? Look outside if you want the weather. <laughs> <laughs> Um, jeez, fine then, goodness. Then my car breaks down in the middle of the road, and when the cops came to help me, they arrested me because they said they didn't want anybody depressed driving around and pathetic, all right? Which led to me being locked up, which led to my cat eating my fish, which led to my house getting on fire. Why the hell did you kill yourself, Mr. Whiskers? <laughs> You're my only friend! Um, so... So, no weather. Then they took my money, okay? The, the bank took my money away from me because they said I'm not gonna need it. I, I won't live long anyways. That's cold even on moral standards from a bank. Um, so no weather. Oh, weather. shut up! Something's bastard. <laughs> <laughs> and now here is a traffic report from our new traffic reporter. DJ Mountain Dew Doritos Bailey. <laughs> oh yeah, thanks. 
<laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> so yeah, there's like traffic coming up that turn back, like crowded stuff. I drive through the parkway too. That's crowd allows me to think. I drive quietly into night in my lake. <laughs> Doubting the existence of the universe. Where did my head come from? <laughs> How did it grow? Did a seed plant it? My Lincoln like stopped me while I'm driving. <laughs> the Holland Tunnel's grow is going to be delayed until we as humans figure out how to use our brains correctly. <laughs> we need to unlock, unlock our inner selves and be restricted by the norms and the boundaries. Or should we allow ourselves to limit ourselves like this? There's a bigger world out there. Yeah. <laughs> the world with many dimensions created by God. And so many for, for us humans to explore. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> what is there? There, we don't know. I want to find out. I want all you to come with me on this journey of space and love. Uh, uh, Mountain Dew Bailey, uh, the traffic report? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. But don't, I don't play by my rules, you know? I find out, oh, go by my own style, bringing that freshness to television. Ah, everybody got proper news reports. I thought it'd be different. Yeah, back to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay, that's it for now. Tune into PA TV News for more later on on Perth Amboy Television. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back with more of the program. program we have here today on your television screen. Okay, so after I just made fun of him, my first guest tonight, or today, or tonight, which one? I don't know. My first guest is a musician who's played with the Rollbacks and went to Berkeley and still is going to Berkeley University in Boston, I'm assuming. Boston? Yes. Boston! He's here now to chat with us for a little bit and he'll have a little piece to play with us. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Louis Delato. Louis, nice to see you. Louis, how are you? So nice to have you. Let me tell you something. When I first met you, I thought you hated me. No. As random as that is, I thought I thought. Why? You, why would you think that? Well, because you know, I've been hanging around with the band. You know, I'm the roadie. I'm the guy that has no talent with the band, of course. Um, <laughs> and I've, I've tried to say hi to you, and uh, people do this to me a lot, where I wave my hand and no one seems to pay attention. When was that? It's like a year ago, two years ago. <laughs> no, but it's good. It's fine. It's fine. No, but it's cool though. But let me ask you something. How did you end up finding the rollbacks? I mean, I know you, you were going to school with uh, yes, one of the band members, yes. Alejandro. Um, Who was on this show? I used to go to uh, a music school in New Jersey, mm -hmm. uh, William Patterson, mm -hmm. and this is where I met Alejandro, um, which is, uh, uh, Alejandro is one of the guitar players for the Rollbacks. Mm -hmm. And I was outside of my dorm building around like 2 o'clock in the morning, jamming with some cats, you know, we had some guitar players, some dudes. Any, like, anything to fuel that jamming session? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> what? Glug, glug. <laughs> no. But yeah, Alejandro came around and, and saw me and he's like, yeah, man, I'm, I really dig your, your playing, man. It's really cool. And I'm like, thanks, man. And then, you know, just from there, we just kind of started talking. He's like, oh, I'm looking for a new lead guitar player in the band. And then after that, we just, we jammed and I met... The rest of the band, George and Pablo. You met Crazy George. I met Crazy George. <laughs> Crazy George, that's right. He's the life of the party, if you think about it. You know, he's the life of the party. He comes in and says, hey! It's like, oh no, we're in for it. It and wouldn't be the same without <laughs> George. No, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be. <laughs> now, now that, that's interesting because I feel that, you know, not to diss anybody or anything, but I feel like you've added a lot to it. And you guys, you know, you guys all seem to mesh well together for some reason. You guys yeah. sound great. I mean, you guys did the theme song for the show unintentionally without knowing until I asked for it. Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you, you guys Wait, sound good. Thank you yeah, so much. No. Yeah, and uh, 
you know, when I, I, I remember I went to George and I asked him, I said, I gotta use this, because I know that you guys did a, a recording in the William Patterson studios, and I said, mm -hmm. I have to use this, this is so great. And he's like, guys, got a house. So I asked George, and he asked Alejandro, I said, yes. I said, yay, I get to get in some of their fame somehow. Yeah. <laughs> but let me ask you this. I'm glad you like it. Well, that, well, you're welcome, I guess. <laughs> the compliments, compliments, compliments. Um, now, uh, how long have you been playing music? I always ask this to every musician that comes on the show. Well, it's a basic I, question. Dude, not, great not, question. Not throwing your hardballs here. If you want me to, of course. You just oh, have no. to give me a second. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I started playing violin when I was eight oh. years old. Oh, wow. And I was classically trained, mm -hmm. which, like, I took private lessons. I played with the orchestra uh, in my town. Mm -hmm. And then, um, years after that, well, not just a few years, many years, uh, uh, right before the summer going into high school, I picked up guitar. Ah, okay. So and I'm assuming it must have been easy to pick up since you know how to play violin, I'm assuming? Yeah, I definitely yeah. Uh, feel that. It was yeah. somewhat easy because I already knew how to read music mm -hmm. and whatnot from playing violin. Yeah. So picking up guitar was not as difficult as somebody who has no idea about music or anything. Now, how did you adjust to pressing on the strings? Because I know I, I tell this story a lot because um, I... In 2001, which shows my age, of course. Yes, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, in 2001, in our, our church group, uh, my father and a couple other people, we decided to play uh, band. Or we, we went with a music instructor, and we bought instruments and everything from Sam Ash, and we were mm -hmm. going to play. And I got to play guitar, and um, I wanted to play guitar, but the thing is, he would, he would talk with me, and it would just it would hurt my fingers, you know? And I don't know, how, how did you adjust to that? I mean... Well, um, what kind of guitar were you playing? Like acoustic guitar? It was, I would, it was probably an acoustic guitar because I think we threw it out because it got busted. Yeah, the only thing we have in there is a bass and a piano in our basement, I think. I don't know where the guitars that you set that's Well, you gotta, you gotta start slow when you first started playing guitar because it is very hard to... Yeah, well, I'm an impatient first. person, so... I mean, I just want to, you know... <laughs> oh, Daddy, it hurts so much! Oh, my goodness! And especially since it's an acoustic guitar, um, acoustic guitar is more difficult to play because the strings are thicker. Mm, so I see. yeah, I could yeah you have to press down harder. Yeah, because I know you, you brought your guitar here. And I I've brought seen, my electric guitar. Yeah, guitar, and so. I, I've seen the way they are, and I, I you know Alejandro has a, an acoustic guitar, and I, mm. I, I I would hold it on occasion because you know I I just it's funny it's funny just holding guitars but not knowing how to play it. You know I, I just find it funny, and I noticed yeah the strings are different. I realized that. Yeah. So I guess that might have been one of the things that I messed up on. So what exactly are you going to play for us today? I'm going to play for you today a piece by Chick Corea. It's called Spain. And, um, yeah. Oh, very nice. Well, Louis, it's so nice to have you on. Can't wait to hear it. Oh, well, thank you so much. Well, I'm it's glad a pleasure. You, glad you didn't come and kill me. Because people seem to do that after interviews for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Louis Camaro, everybody. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. 
Thank you so much for coming. That was really oh, awesome. You brought a whole band with you. Yeah, you brought a whole band with you and everything. Yeah, uh-huh. You know. <laughs> All right. Well, Louis, thank you again. Really appreciate it. Come back anytime you want. Really. Oh. Come back anytime you want. You're welcome to come back anytime. Thank Just you so when you much. Get, when you get big enough, you know, save room for all of us. <laughs> all right. We're gonna, we're gonna do a commercial. We'll be right back with the rest of the show, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That's our program for today. I want to thank everyone who's come here today. Uh, Louie, thank you for coming on. I really do appreciate it. That was killer, man. I want to thank uh, Michael, Daniel, JC, Chris for coming by. Chris is a new guy. Uh, round of applause for Chris, everybody. This did fantastic. Go, Chris. Good to know that my writing actually works for some people. It actually works for everybody. So I want to thank everyone. I want to, and especially I want to thank George uh, Bonilla for helping out. This guy is really the anchor behind all this. No, really, he is. He really does help us out a lot. He really ha- brings this show a new level. A round of applause for George, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. 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 I, think, uh, I just want to just say something real quick because I just kind of feel the need to say it. Uh, I'm not going to waste your time. I just feel in myself that I should say it. Um, I never really speak out in terms of describing events that happen because it depends on when this gets taped or when it gets recorded and the time frame it gets uh, put on. But I figured, you know... Since it's so recent, it's so chilling, I figured I might as well just say something about it, because this one really did kind of hit home for me. Uh, just the other day, there was um, a, a racist uh, wacko, uh, it's a very uh, very basic word to say, who went into a church in South Carolina, and he murdered nine people having a Bible study in church. Um, you know, just when you, you know, I was watching Jon Stewart last night, I DVR'd his episode of The Daily Show, and he devoted no jokes to the show in order, you know, in terms of, you know, it's kind of like a respect for it. Maybe I should have done that today because some of these suck. <laughs> no. But, um, you know, I, it, it really got me thinking, and I wasn't going to say anything about it, but I figured that, you know, me being similar of similar faith and, and, and just a lot of the crap that happens in this country, especially this last year, I feel like I just had to say something. Um, you know, we're in America, we spend tons and tons of money um, fighting overseas and, and, and protecting the threat to come to our borders. But one of the threats that we really don't talk about, and I know John Stewart mentioned this, but I'm going to echo his sentiments again, is one of the threats that we really don't face or we don't scrutinize is the threats in our own country. You know, we pr- we're protected from everyone else except ourselves. We are our own worst enemy. This demonic, uh, just sick man 
went into this church, you know, racist, race, um, racially fueled, went into this church and murdered these people innocently. It, it, it really sickens me to see that this stuff happens in this country. And uh, I, I, this is just me coping with it, I guess, but this really, it really did hit me hard because no one should ever die in this country like that. That's just sad. That really is just sad. You know, and you would think at this point in our lives, at least in modern society nowadays, where everything is so accepting, you would think that all this stuff would be brushed under. The South is still full of racism. Racism is still very well and alive today, and I hate to say that. But the only thing we can do now is just continue to pray for those who are, um, continue to pray for those who are in hurt. If you don't believe in God, well, you know, just... Put your thoughts with them because, you know, this country, we're really going through a lot. And it's a big spiritual battle with all these negative forces. So I figured, I felt compelled to say that because, and I'm not going to try and rationalize and I'm not going to try and do what those pundits on MSNBC or CNN do because they're all morons on there. I'm not a political analyst. I'm not going to sit here and try and find the reason why. We all know what it is. It was racism and it was biased against their religion. You would think in the United States we wouldn't have to deal with this kind of stuff, but we do. So that's just what I want to say. Um, really, I just I wanted to do that because I felt like I needed to say it. I've been it's been swirling in my head all day. Thank you again, guys, for coming. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate the help. God bless you all. Check out more of the page later on if you can. Indulge me, please. God bless you all. Good night. Led me to be locked up. Led to my cat. Eating my pot. JC's uncle or cousin or whatever you are, yeah! What? <laughs> but yeah, dude, I knew this was gonna happen. I knew I was gonna get like a phone call. So, uh, hey, hey at least I expected it. And, uh, hey, at least it's gonna be on the blue for real now. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks a lot for that. Uh, but yeah, I'll call you back in like a couple minutes. <laughs> so you called me by accident? Uh, uh, thanks, man. I appreciate the call. You know this is going on the blooper reel. Right? Yeah, it is going on the blooper reel. Right? So you're going to be part of the show now, Joel. <laughs> awesome. Ha, 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 ha.